Hi, my name is Kim Loudermilk, and I'm a senior lecturer in the Institute for the Liberal Arts here at Emory University, where I teach classes in American Studies and in Interdisciplinary Studies. And I'm here with one of my students, Jeremy Slater, and I will ask him to introduce himself. Yep. Hi guys, my name is Jeremy Slater. I'm from Roanoke, Virginia, and I am a junior at the college studying Interdisciplinary Studies, Hindi and Persian. So both Jeremy and I are first-generation college students, although many generations apart, many years apart. Um, and so we wanted to talk a bit about that experience and to tell the stories of what it was like for us to be first-generation college students, and then talk a, bit, a little bit more broadly about that experience in general. So Jeremy, do you want to start with your story of being a first-gen student? Of course, yeah. So I think the moment that I realized I was truly first generation was when I was applying to colleges um, because I had no general idea about the process, mm -hmm. um, which colleges I should go to or like I could go to. Um, the whole financial process was also like just so confusing and like something that I had so ambiguous and enigmatic. Um, and so when I was applying to colleges, I was abroad my senior year of high school. Um, and it really was my college counselor and my friends who were also um, applying to colleges who weren't first generation um, that really kind of helped me understand the process. Um, something that my parents just simply couldn't help me with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I had a very similar experience in that my parents just thought going to college in and of itself was enough. Where you went didn't matter. How you got there didn't matter. Um, and though I had been recruited by a lot of private colleges, primarily on the East Coast, I'm from Iowa originally, um, my parents said, well, we can't consider those, we can't possibly afford them, because they had no idea that something like financial aid was available to students. Um, and so it was uh, really narrowed my choices down to state universities in Iowa. Mm -hmm. So what about when you got here? Did, it, um, did you still feel like a first generation student? I totally did. Um, it was interesting at least once, besides like being completely overwhelmed by like actually mm -hmm. being an institution and like being surrounded by like-minded people and professors and whatnot, once we got to like the first midterm season, um, I had like four essays or something to write. And I was wondering like, where do I go to for help? Like I have four essays to write, like I don't know what I'm doing. and it, it didn't occur to me that my friends and my roommates could text or email their parents and ask mm -hmm. them for help, but I couldn't because my parents don't know anything about the Islam in mid-century mm -hmm. Iran or something. Um, so that was really when I realized that I have a different perspective and a different experience mm -hmm. from my peers. Um, what about you? How was it? So. I don't think that when I was in college it was as noticeable to me and I think part of that just has to do with the fact that when I was in college um, about 35 percent of all undergraduates were first generation college students and so there was a big cohort of us it wasn't like um, you know I didn't feel as alone there were a lot of people who were in the same situation that I was in and so we kind of figured it out together um, now I think at Emory in this entering class only 11 percent of of students are first generation students and that's a huge that's a huge difference for me I think it became more clear when I went to graduate school mm -hmm. and I suddenly realized that like all of my friends knew about things like applying for fellowships and applying for scholarships and getting money from grants and this kind of, and that was completely foreign to me but like one of one of my friends um, her father was the Dean of the graduate school at University of Iowa so she just had a lot more information mm -hmm. about that kind of um, work than I did. So I think it became more clear to me in graduate school. Certainly. Um, it's interesting how I was reading this article from Tina Wildhagen that the term first generation student wasn't used very frequently um, up until the 2000s. Um, and I definitely understood when I was applying to colleges that I could um, demonstrate my or I could identify myself mm -hmm. as a first generation student um, and kind of not use that to my advantage, but use it as like a marker of my identity. Um, so what was your experience of, did you ever identify as being a first generation student in undergrad? Or? 
before? No, not really. I mean, it was not a term that I knew anything about really until um, many years later, actually, when I started working at a university, that that idea of being a first generation student actually meant something to me. Um, and I had read some, some um, scholarly work, particularly by women, um, who talked about being the first woman in their family or the first woman that they even knew who went to college, and women who were mostly older than me. Um, but, and, and that experience resonated with me a little bit, but the idea of calling myself a first generation college student didn't actually occur to me. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's a good thing to um, I have that identity sort of attached to you or to claim that identity? What do you think about that? Um, at least going off of my personal experience as well as the research I've done, um, especially from the Tina Wildhagen article um, where she did some ethno ethnographic research um, into Cavett College, which is an anonymous um, name for a university she was studying. And I think it's important to assess that there is a certain percentage of students who enter universities who do not have access to the resources of individuals who are not first generation, but I don't think that increasing the saliency of m me being a first generation student is like constructive in a way because I feel like it has forced me to constantly become aware of, you know, my setbacks um, or my potential setbacks to get to the same place that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it is important to increase the awareness of something so important as education and having opportunities for education for everyone. Um, but I don't think the construction of an identity that is potentially um, corrosive to like mental health. There were some articles talked about the mental health aspect um, whereby first generation students mm -hmm. um, aren't aware of the resources that were given are, are given to them in universities um, and therefore they have setbacks and like mental strain because they don't have the support from their families or friends. Um, so yeah, I think it's a very complex issue, but yeah. So why do you think that colleges started to think about students as first generation students in around that time period, around two, the early 2000s? Do you think there's an advantage to either the students or to the institutions um, in having a designation like that? Um, that's a tricky question. Um, you know, it might potentially be um, a way for universities to delineate um, a certain narrative that they want in the admissions mm -hmm. process or for rankings or to increase the prestigiousness of university. Um, but also it might be a way to monitor and gauge um, not only the resources that they can offer for first generation students, but just to generally know how many students in their population are mm -hmm. first gen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's also a way in which it sort of um, perpetuates the sort of American myth of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and, and moving up and being able to create your dreams and that education is certainly mm -hmm. um, one step toward that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a way in which it sort of, um, perpetuates or, or up, upholds, is a better word, it upholds the kind of mission that many universities have in terms of creating a, a more educated populace, of um, giving people um, really a um, way to reach their dreams, mm -hmm. yeah? So there's that kind of um, potential there as well, mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned that um, one of the things that identifying students as first generation can do is uh, help universities recognize how to support students who were in that um, category. And certainly when I was in school, there was, nobody talked about it, there was no particular support for um, students who were the first in their families to go to college. And so I'm wondering if um, you think there are things that universities should do to help support students who are first generation students. Um, certainly, um I was, in my first year of Emory, we were given, or all students were required to take PACE, um, which is basically a preparatory course for um, university students. And what that did was allow me to understand the opportunities and the resources um, 
as well as the organizations and departments at Emory that would be useful for me as a student. And I think that was almost critical for me understanding where mm -hmm. I can go if I needed help, what I, what I can do if I needed a particular essay um, corrected or drafted. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to have programs for first generation students. Your opinion on um, the resources that universities can do for first generation students? So some of the things that I've read suggest that one important piece is a really deep understanding of financial aid and how it works and making sure that those resources are there particularly for first generation students. Um, and then another thing that actually makes a big difference in terms of the success of first generation students is um, putting together relationships with faculty and with peers who can serve as mentors and who can create a kind of support community for those students. And so having programs in place that actually help facilitate those kinds of relationships I think would be really important. Well, thank you, Jeremy, for sharing your story with me and for having this conversation together. Um, I remember when we first met, it was in the freshman seminar that I was teaching on college life, and um, I revealed at that time that I was a first-generation college student, and you told me that you were too. And I think that sort of um, began the relationship that we've had together over the past couple of years, so thank you. And I want to thank all of you as well for joining us for this conversation, and um, we hope that uh, we we're able to shed some light on what it's like to be a first-generation college student. <laughs>